options. We're going to explore st uh, stable coins, what Cardano needs to do to bridge the gap between traditional finance and DeFi. This is a hotly contested issue the subject of so much debate uh, and conversation over the course of the event. And now we get to hear from an expert who truly will help us explore exactly why the Cardano blockchain is so perfectly positioned to bridge real Fi and DeFi and bring financial services truly to the masses. Please join me in welcoming from Emergo, Vinith Bhuvanagiri. Hello, hello. Uh, hope you guys are having a fantastic time at the Cardano Summit. I know for sure that I'm definitely enjoying myself and the conversations that we've been having. So today, I really want to get into um, fintech within the Cardano ecosystem and get into the nitty gritties in regards to what it takes to bring a stable coin to this ecosystem. But before we get into the fun stuff, I'd like to take a couple minutes, provide you guys with a little bit of background and history as to what the journey was for us to be able to get over here. So for the last nine years, I've kind of been spending straddling the gap between DeFi and TradFi, or RealFi and uh, the crypto ecosystem. And for the most part, this is what it's actually felt like, where you're precariously in between two distant worlds, very difficult to kind of connect from one side of the ecosystem to the other. And so what we're looking to do over here is kind of bridge those two worlds together, have those two come together in a way in which we can then be able to move clearly and easily from one to the other. So like back when I first entered the crypto space in 2014, these two worlds were, I would say for lack of a better term, worlds apart. You had Bitcoin being the primary cryptocurrency back in the day, and there was a $2 billion market cap. None of the exchanges were regulated, and the crypto world was, for the most part, the Wild West. And then you look at it today. As the industry grew and mature, and as more people like you guys got involved within cryptocurrency, the industry grew from a $2 billion market cap to close to $1 trillion. New and unique products were built and set up on top of the crypto ecosystem, such as DeFi, such as lending, such as payments and stablecoin, and all of this kind of helped, I would say, alleviate some of the issues that existed, but still left a lot to be desired. Even to, to, even to this day, if I ever want to go out and, let's say, purchase some caffeine from Starbucks, I still have to go and use my credit card or a normal form of payment for the most part. I swipe my credit card every month, and at the end of it, I'll convert my Bitcoin or cryptocurrency into dollars, run it through my bank account, and then have that be used to pay for all uh, my goods and services. And this for us has been a little bit frustrating, where imagine a, a better world than this, a world in which any anonymous or random crypto user quickly and easily can move between the unregulated world of crypto into the regulated world of traditional finance. And how do we get to that world? And what does it take for us to get there? And so right now, the biggest issue that we've kind of seen and a lot of feedback that we've received is why is regulation necessary? Why do we need to bring regulation into crypto? And isn't it the antithesis for what crypto stands for? And I actually, back in the day, used to hold that belief where like, crypto should be unregulated. Like if it is able to be regulated, what's the point of even building anything on top of a blockchain? But again, as the industry matured, so too did my views on this subject, where if you have to move real-world assets, or if you have to deal with anything that connects the DeFi world to the real world, regulation is actually necessary, where if I'm holding, let's say, an asset that represents a real-world asset, I want to make sure that that real-world asset is 100% backed by whatever, sorry, that token is 100% backed by whatever real-world asset it is that I am uh, that, that, that's supposed to be representing that token. I want to make sure that that token is a perfected interest in that underlying asset. And so this is where we've kind of come to the introduction of Anzans, which I'm super excited to be presenting to, uh, to you guys. So Anzans is the new Emergo FinTech product that we've set up to bridge these two worlds together, where we can bring people in from the crypto ecosystem to the traditional finance world in a simple and safe process. The first product that we would like to launch with Anzans is our stable coin called USDA. 
So USDA is a 100% one-to-one backed stablecoin that we're bringing to the Cardano ecosystem with the help of the other founding members within the space. Anzens is a technology infrastructure platform that we've created to basically sit on top of regulated financial services infrastructure to be able to tokenize the assets that are being held within the regulated custody of these financial institutions. So we've built a technology infrastructure stack that allows for traditional financial institutions to be able to tokenize any asset that they're able to custody in a regulated manner and be able to port that over to the DeFi ecosystem. So for us, where we really want to get to I would say at a, by the end of 2023, is a world in which anyone with a crypto wallet within Cardano can get full access to the US banking system in a straightforward, AM, like going, by going through a straightforward AML KYC process. At which point in time, they can then determine whether or when they want to operate in the unregulated world of crypto or the regulated world of traditional finance. For me, one of the areas that I'm really excited to be, I guess, getting into with this is I want a future in the next upcoming year or so where anyone with a Euroi wallet, an Eternal wallet, or any of the other wallets within the Cardano ecosystem can quickly move, let's say, a $10,000 worth of ADA from their anonymous wallet into a regulated account at Anzens, be able to take a loan out against that and then be able to fund a prepaid credit or debit card that they can then use to make real world purchases using that asset. And with the technology stack that we've created for Anzens, we're not going to just stop with the tokenization of dollars, but our goal is to move far uh, beyond that into tokenizing any currency or any real world asset. So the goal is to start with dollars, but then at a certain point in time, move to euros, yen, as well as other assets such as gold, commodities, and other elements of that sort. And so for us to be able to offer this, uh, I I say I'd like to run you guys through the process right now in regards to how exactly this process works, because I'm guessing you guys are all pretty excited to know or learn more about how um, we're able to tokenize dollars, how the infrastructure stack works, and everything else. So let me run you quickly through what everything looks like. So Through the Anzens platform itself, any individual can run through that platform, go through a simple AML and KYC process, at which point in time they actually have a fully segregated account at an underlying financial institution within the United States, a regulated trust company, so to speak, at which point in time they can then fund their account using dollars, credit cards, debit cards, ACH, or wire, as well as a multitude of cryptocurrencies. They can fund their account with the press of a button those funds within that account can then be transferred from um, US dollars or traditional fiat into USDA, at which point in time that USDA is then issued back to the end wallet of whatever choosing the participant has. So if I have a random wallet that I want to fund with $10,000 worth of USDA, all I've got to do is go through the AML KYC process for Anzins, tokenize those funds by going through a really simple Uh, process, and then at the end of that process, I've got $10,000 worth of USDA sitting within my Euroi wallet, at which point in time, those $10,000 of tokenized USDA are native assets within the Cardano ecosystem. So those are fully free to exist within the uh, DeFi world or the Wild West crypto world of, um, of the Cardano ecosystem. So anyone can move those. We're not going to be able. We're not going to restrict. Or we're not going to look to restrict those movements. Those are free native assets. You can use those on indexes, uh, DeFi lending and borrowing programs, so on and so forth. And let's say at the end of the day, if you want to move those back into real world dollars and actually make payroll or other things, what you would do then is we would go back into the Anzans platform and request a withdrawal. You'll be issued a what is it, a unique uh, or a client unique burn address where you would then be depositing those funds into. Once those funds reach that unique burn address, we would then actually instruct the transfer of real world dollars from the segregated, sorry, from our collateral account within the trust institution to your segregated account uh, within that same institution. At which point in time, those real world dollars can then be moved anywhere that you guys want within the real world. 
So for us, this is kind of our first step with this platform for being able to merge these two worlds together, where individuals such as yourselves will have that opportunity and that ability to be able to basically decide when is regulation necessary and when is regulation not necessary, and where would I like to play in the regulated world versus the unregulated world. And this for me is kind of a way in which it allows, I would say, people within the Cardano ecosystem to be able to utilize b like basically the safety and security of the regulated financial world mixed with that of the freedom and transparency of the crypto ecosystem. So, a couple of other things that I'd like to discuss with you guys kind of moving forward in regards to stable coins and how things can kind of progress moving forward and why Cardano is probably the best placed uh, crypto blockchain to be able to address a lot of these issues. So I know I'm guessing a lot of you guys have USDC or USDT sitting within the um, sitting within the Ethereum ecosystem. A lot of the issues that kind of stem from that are primarily due to the fact that Ethereum is a smart contracts based uh, uh, blockchain, where in order for me to move my USDT or USDC, it actually requires quite a bit of funds uh, from a gas perspective in order for me to be able to transact. This makes it so that micropayments, lending and borrowing services, or providing services such as banking the underbanked become a lot more difficult to be able to, uh, to go down just due to the prohibitive costs. Being a Cardano native asset allows us to kind of circumnavigate around these since those assets actually exist on the blockchain itself. So the participants can actually be able to utilize these lower fees that exist primarily within the Cardano ecosystem. So for the rest of 2023 and the beginning of 2024, our product roadmap is to be able to launch, I would say midway through Q1 of 2023, uh, around February, there thereabouts. Right now, a lot of the front end of our application, as well as the system itself, is set up. We're running through various rigorous testing at this point in time for us to be able to ensure the safety and security of our platform. Kind of going from there, um, I would say between three and five months out, the goal is to be able to then start to introduce alternative assets outside of just USDA to the Cardano ecosystem. So this would include the tokenization of dollars, euro, yen, as well as gold and other commodities. And then from there, a couple months after, our goal is to start to offer de oh, sorry, centralized lending and borrowing services within the Anzans platform itself to complement some of the decentralized lending and borrowing programs that exist within the Cardano ecosystem. So again, for example, if I have $10,000 worth of ADA and I want to use that to be able to purchase real world goods and assets, I don't want to have to sell my ADA and I would love to have a, a application on my, uh, on my wallet itself where I can quickly go, hey, I want to take these $10,000 worth of ADA, move it into the regulated world, take out a $5,000 loan against that, and then be able to use a prepaid credit or debit card directly through, let's say, my Uroi wallet in order for me to be able to make real-world purchases using the crypto that I have. And again, this allows for a much smoother way for me to be able to utilize the benefits of crypto uh, as well as actually being able to bring those into my real-world day-to-day uh, use cases. And so I would say we are very excited to be offering these services to you. And also moving forward, we'd like to spend a lot more time engaging better with the community and bringing you guys along with us on this journey moving forward. So over the next couple of weeks, one of the things or one of the engagements that we would like to, uh, to work with you guys on is we've got the actual front end set up and ready to go on the Anzans platform, and we'd love to work with you guys to figure out how exactly do we want to make changes to this? How do we benefit, or how do we provide greater benefits to the community, and get your guys' feedback and thoughts in regards to moving this forward to best fit the Cardano uh, ecosystem. So, with that kind of being said, um, and this also being a, uh, a relative bear market, one of the thought processes that I've kind of had throughout my time in crypto uh, since when I originally got into this space was 
there was the term HODL that was used quite extensively within uh, crypto. And I've actually never been that big of a fan of the term HODL, where I would have preferred the term huddle, where together as a community, we build together and we actually help bring things forward, where we build real world applications that actually utilize the technology of crypto as, to, as opposed to Ponzi economics that are sometimes um, detrimental, not sometimes detrimental, but more so sometimes prevalent within the, uh, the, the crypto ecosystem. And so that's one of the big things that we want to do with you guys with Emergo is basically provide these services, provide these features to you guys and help build basically a better ecosystem or a better world going forward utilizing the Cardano blockchain and its uh, inherent benefits. So with that kind of being said, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I also would like for you guys to come and find us at the booth to learn a little bit more about what we're working on uh, within Emergo Fintech. And with that being said, uh, I'd love to wrap up. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you.